Hi everyone, I'm Dick Beardsley. Welcome to the fishing scene. Hey folks, here we are mid-September and the walleyes that we're fishing for today, they're starting to relate to these real steep breaks. So we're gonna see if we can't get us into some nice walleyes today. And with me, my good friend is Vern Benson. Vern, nice to have you on this well, year again. Well, thank you, Dick. And Glad to be back. Last year, we, Vern, we had a ball. You and I were out uh, shooting a show on and, and, uh, one of the area lakes and we were bass fishing. And I'll tell you what, Vern, it's gonna be hard, hard to top the show we did last year. We caught lots of bass last year, Dick, and that was really fun. Yeah, now I, I heard I've kind of got you converted to a kind of a semi-bass fisherman now. <laughs> uh, yes, you did. Uh, I spent half the summer this summer <laughs> casting spinnerbaits for bass <laughs> yeah. instead of fishing walleye. Yeah, well, I know you're a very avid uh, walleye fisherman, and uh, I'm glad we can have you out here today. And, and like I said, folks, we're on a lake where uh, it's not a real big lake, but what we're keen on today is an area where it's a real sharp break. And in the fall, as the water temperatures continue to, to cool down, those fish really relate to those real steep breaks out there. So what you want to do is get yourself a good map. And if you see a point or a, a, a good break that shows up on the map, hey, that would be one of my first spots. Oh! Come here, buddy. Oh, yeah, there he comes. Oh, yeah, there's a nice eye. There we go. All right. Good net job there, Vern. Whoops, I might have got your jig in there with yeah, it, huh? Yeah, it looks like That it. happens sometimes. We'll get yours back out there. Let's see here. I don't think it's too bad here. Well, I think you just did that, so I wouldn't catch anything <laughs> while you were in. I think so. Hey, folks, first walleye of the day, huh? Nice eater fish, about a, oh, about a 16 inch or so. We're gonna put him in the live well and uh, make sure that Vern can take a few fish home for uh, for a good meal here. Let's see. Sometimes when this, ha oh there, mine's out and so is Vern's and we'll get that back in the water and I'll get mine uh, baited back up here. Most simple what we're doing, we're jig fishing. Jig fishing's probably, as I've said in the past, caught more walleyes than probably any type of fishing uh, type of method there is out there. And what we're using, we're just, we're putting on a, a fathead minnow and uh, dropping her down and we're working the edge of this real sharp break. And right now that fish came out of about 23 feet of water. So I'm gonna dig into my live well here and get myself another minnow. And we're just hooking it through the mouth and out the back of the head there and just uh, dropping her down and then working a little bit. Dropping her down and then Working a little bit, you feel a little thump or a little heaviness. You want to uh, tighten up that line, and give them a good whack. The key is to be on that bottom. Those walleyes are hanging right on the bottom. Right on the bottom. Got a little bit of a wind, so that's good. Now that one didn't really hit it hard. All of a sudden my line just kind of got heavy. And I reeled in the slack and gave him a good, good whack. Fishing right off along that sharp break. And boy, it is sharp. I mean, in the length of a boat, you can be in uh, 12 foot of water to 25 feet of water. That's how sharp this break is. And these fish at different times of the day will move up and they'll move down off that break. So sometimes, like say earlier in the morning, later in the day, or if it's cloudy, they might be up more on top of the break, you know, where just before she starts to break out. Otherwise, uh, during the middle of the afternoon, not much wind, a lot of sunshine, no clouds, they're gonna be off real deep. All right, Vern. All right, buddy. Good job. He's staying right down there like an eye. I don't 
don't see him yet. He's a pounding. Oh yeah, I can see the end of your rod tip, he's pounding. I don't see him. There he comes now, he's, oh yeah, nice eye. Nice eye. Come here, buddy, I just seen his white tip. Oh yeah, good eye. Come here, buddy. Yeah, all right, Vern. Nice fish. Nice going, buddy. Good nice fish. fish. You bet. Boy, that's just a, a nice, nice northern Minnesota walleye, huh? Wow, look at that, folks. Good job there, Vern. Got him on a kind of a, a bright yellow yep. jig. Uh, You're gonna have some good eating tonight, huh? There. Yeah. Little oh. water's a little stained, not much. No, but it is a little bit. I couldn't. Yeah, well, good fish. We'll put him in the live well here. And uh, all right, that one, uh, that one, came, about 26 feet. That one came in. So we're getting these fish, folks, out in a little bit deeper water, and. Uh, off that real, the real deep edge of that sharp break. And again, we're just fishing this one sharp break off this real uh, point that comes off the land. You, you can't miss it. You look at a map and you can find these for yourself. And in the fall, key on these points, especially if there's a little wind blowing into it like this there is today, key on those points, start shallow workout deep. And I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna probably find some fish, no doubt about it. So we're gonna get pitched back out here. And I'm just using the boat uh, with my electric trolling motor to kind of move along the edge there and let the wind kind of work us a little bit and uh, just fishing real slow. More of the fishing scene after this. Uh, how did you decide to pick this lake uh, to go walleye fishing on today, Dick? Uh, how do you pick your lakes when you decide to uh, either take a client or uh, shoot a show on? Yeah, good. that's a great question, uh, Vernon. One of the things is I keep a log of when I've been on you know, lakes and, and uh, how they produce. And this is one of these lakes that, that usually produce pretty well in the fall. And also, again, you know, as we start getting into you know, mid-September and then into October, and maybe even into November if, we've, if the water hasn't froze up yet, and these walleyes really like to relate to areas in, that have sharp breaks. And, and the lake we're on today really has a, has a sharp, sharp break out here on this particular lake. And again, looking back in my log book for the last couple of years, I've noticed that by mid-September, this lake starts to turn on, and and uh, basically that's kind of how I choose, and and it really makes it, it makes a difference by keeping a log and keeping a record in detail of how you've done in the past, and you can kind of know that when those lakes will turn back on. There's one right there. Yeah, come on, buddy. That's a nice. Jeez, I got you one too, Dick. All right, Vern. Good job, buddy. Mine's not real big, so I'll just. Uh, this one isn't real big either. He's fighting pretty good though. Oh, there he comes. Yeah. Nice little, nice oh, eater. Yeah, there's this one too. Flick him in there. All right. Good job, a double. Hey. All right, Vern. Nice. Good. Two, both, almost two inches, a little bit bigger, but a couple of nice eating size yep. fish. Good deal. All right. Yeah. You'll have a nice meal. Good job. Hey, folks, a double. You know, that doesn't happen too often, walleye fishing, but uh, hey, it's nice when you get on the, get on the fish like that and, and uh, can get them biting you know, on a double like that. You know, let's talk about our conditions today. We have a very light south to southwest wind at about five miles per hour, so just enough to kind of not really break up the water so much, but at least it's enough to kind of keep the boat moving a little bit so we can use that wind to our advantage. Our water temperature is 65 degrees, air temperature about 55 degrees, and water clarity, I would say about medium at best. So the conditions today are pretty decent for, uh, for walleye fishing, although we don't have any cloud cover. Other than that, uh, conditions are pretty good. And what's helping us, I think, is for one thing, these fish are out in deeper water. You know, they're out in 23, 24, 25 foot of water. So they're really not seeing any of that light penetration down there, especially with the water clarity not real good and um, with a, just a little bit of a wind kind of breaking up that sunlight. So, boy, this is, uh, this is fun. And folks, walleye fishing in the fall, do not put your boats away yet. Yes, I know it's hunting season and, you know, winter's right around the corner, but some of the best fishing of the entire season 
is for the next six weeks or so. And boy, get out there and enjoy it because I guarantee you, you could have days just like Vernon and I are having today. I'm gonna get baited back up here. <clears throat> uh, at this time of the year, Dick, is any uh, particular color of jig better than the other col color that you found? Uh... Another good question, Vern. And, and again, I go back to my, my log book and you know, I, I know that on this particular lake, uh, gold or yellow seems to work real good. And again, you know, we've got bright sunshine out there. So usually, as they say, um, bright days, bright colors, dark days, dark colors. And um, so that's why I've got this kind of a yellowish gold jig on there. But again, you don't want to get caught up with just, you know, one color jig. And a lot of times it's easy to do that. You know, you've, you've had a jig that works well on other lakes and, and you get out there and you're bound and determined to make it work on the particular lake you're on that day. And if you get out there and try it and uh, that color just isn't producing, boy, you know, don't be afraid to flip on another color jig because it's amazing how just changing the color or even the size. Now I've got a uh, quarter ounce jig on today because we're out in a little bit deeper water, but sometimes, you know, going a little bit smaller, so it lets that minnow can kind of, even though that minnow is, you know, on the end of your hook and not really lively, but with a smaller jig, it can actually work that jig around a little bit more so it, it's more buoyancy, or sometimes, if it's real windy or you're fishing in real deep water, then you gotta go to even a heavier jig than like a quarter ounce. But quarter ounce for what we're doing today, not much wind, you know, fairly deep water, 20 to 25 feet. Um, jig size, about quarter inch is good today and, and a, a bright color because of the conditions that we're fishing. There we go. That's how's, an eye. How's that one feel, Dick? Not yeah. bad. I, I, I don't think I need a net, but okay. but uh, nice eye though. Yeah, there he comes. I can see his see his white tip on his tail there. Come here, buddy. Got that yellow jig right in the side of his mouth here. I'll just kind of reach down and oh, some nice. Come here, buddy. Nice eating size walleyes. Boy, these are perfect oh, eaters. Yes, they are. Golly. Nice ones. You betcha. Nothing huge, but boy. Just some nice eating fish, huh, folks? That's a dandy. You betcha. We're gonna get that guy in the live well here. And... Oh, I still got my minnow. Gonna rehook that a little bit, and we'll get out there. And... That wind seems to be coming up just a tad more. Yeah. That might get. Uh, sometimes that can get the fish biting even a little bit I better. I got a little nibble here. Oh yeah, there I got one. Yeah. There I got one. Yeah, boy, Vern. I seen that one. Yeah. You bet you. I saw the saw your rod tip kind oh, of oh, little guy, huh? A big monster here. <laughs> hey, what the heck? It's a fish, though, right? You bet. <laughs> and you know what, folks? That's a great sign too. Is you know, sure everybody wants to catch the big fish. <laughs> everybody wants to catch the big fish, but uh, you know, it's a good sign to see. The, you know, some of the smaller fish that you catch too, because that means that those smaller fish are reproducing, and in a year or two, they're gonna be those nice eating size fish and maybe even be bigger. More of the fishing scene coming up. Hey folks, sometimes what you might wanna to try too in the fall, you know, a lot of people think plastic baits are just good in the summertime when it's warm, but I'll tell you this, in the fall, they can be deadly just like they can in the summertime, and I've got a little, a little, uh, power bait by Berkeley, little three inch uh, type minnow bait with sparkles on it. So I'm gonna pitch that out there and see if I can have any luck fishing with uh, an artificial on there. Oh, there's one Dick. Oh man, oh, Berk, come on. that's gotta be a nice fish there. I could tell yeah, when you set see. the it hook. It doesn't feel too good. Oh, wait a minute, that's, oh, this one could be a decent one. Boy, I, when you say, oh, look at him pounding. When you set that hook and I can hear your drag going, yeah. I thought, oh, this might be a better fish. Oh, yeah. Come on here, baby. Come on, buddy. Let us see ya. Let oh, us yeah. see ya. Let us see ya. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, there's a Ooh, dandy. There's an eye. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Yeah, ah, he's ooh, going to burn. Oh, good job. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll take that. You. We're going to put that one back, oh, aren't we, Dick? Yep, that was a little too big that's... to keep. That's, a, that's one that's uh, definitely not going in the frying pan, but wow, look at that fish. What a dandy. 
hooked her right in the corner. Look at the, isn't that pretty? The way she's sticking her fins out like that. Wow. Nice fish. Nice fish is right. Oh, we'll get her back in the water. Boy, you had a good hook set there, Vern. Nice going, buddy. Okay, All right, let's get that gal back yeah. in, the, in the water here. Make sure she Come here, girl. Come on. Gets going again. Oh, yeah. There she goes. All right. Yes. Oh, folks, that's what it's all about. <laughs> well, I tell you what, you know, those eater fish, they're fun to catch. And you get fish like that. That was probably three and a half, four pound walleye. That's just kind of bonus fish. I mean, and those are the kind of fish really you, you need to put back in the water. You know, I'd rather see a person keep a 30 inch fish than, you know, a 23, 24 inch fish because they're hitting right at the prime of their reproductive years and they can put a lot of little walleyes back in the water. But boy, that was, uh, that was a dandy. Did he hit very hard? Yeah, it, you have it that old bunk. Yeah, you know, just a like typical bunk. walleye. Yeah. Typical walleye. Oh boy, I, I got this plastic on here. Something just picked it up. Oh! Not as big as that one that Vern just got, but not a bad one. Stand down there. Oh yeah, yeah, that's not a bad fish. I'm just gonna wing him up in here. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Fall walleye fishing. I'm telling you, got him out of plastic too. Got him out of plastic okay. too. All I right, one yep, Vern's got one going. Hey folks, <laughs> the walleyes are on the bite. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. It's a walleye. Yes, I can tell, I can the tell way by the way it's bumping yep, here. I can too. Don't see it yet, but it's uh, the way it's hanging down there, straight down. I don't think it's a northern pike. Or a bass. There it comes. Oh, yeah, that's not, a, another nice little eater. I'll just flip it up yeah. here. Yeah. All right. Another 14 inch or so. And all right. Hey, folks, man, this is awesome. I'm telling you, fall walleye fishing. And you know what? It only gets better. It will only get better from here. That's no kid. We're, you know, mid September. Another month from now, man, the walleye bite could really be going. A couple of reasons. One in particular is that by the end of September with cooler nights, cooler days, water temperature cooling down, that water is eventually gonna turn over. And what that means is that warm water on the air on the top of the surface is gonna mix in and, and turn itself. So basically the temperature will be the same from top to bottom. The oxygen levels will be the same from top to bottom. And when that happens, usually around late September, first part of October, man, it tells the fish one thing, that winter is right around the corner and now's the time to put on the feed bag. But I'll tell you what, they're putting on the feed bag today. Let's get back out there. You know, Dick, I notice I think your pole's a little bit longer than mine there and a lot thinner. Uh, is there a favorite kind of pole you like to use for different type things and different size line or a different type line? Yeah, there, there really is, Vern. I'll tell you, a good friend of mine, Greg Bowen, he's a uh, Wisconsin uh, guide up in northwestern Wisconsin and during the winter him and his wife make uh, what he calls it's called the leech stick it's seven feet two inches long and it is an awesome awesome fishing rod and it's it's kind of a, a medium light action it's got a very fast tip but a good backbone here and really I use it for bass I use it for walleyes I use it for just about anything sensitivity is great it's got a you know great uh, nice cork handle on there and for reels I tell you what the the pinnacle deadbolt reels for the money you know they're gonna run you about fifty to sixty dollars and they're the, without question in my book the best reel that you can buy for the money they got unlimited anti-reverse which means when you're reeling and you stop there's no back plan and that's especially important for jig fishing and I really like to uh, I put on uh, Berkeley Trilene XL six pound test that's what I use mostly for walleyes and and uh, it, it's a real nice limp line you can cast it far you can the sensitivity is real good on it but um, yeah those those three things Berkeley line and and the uh, the leech stick by Greg Bone and and pinnacle deadbolt reels hard combination to beat kind of got underneath the boat on me here Stick your rod out, try to get them to come out. You got wrapped up around the motor, motor here. Okay, I got her. Now we'll see if that fish is still on there. Oh yeah. yeah. It looks like, oh. oh, the wonder, <laughs> it's a bass. Oh, well, let me just reach down and get him. Those bass will, uh, 
he got underneath that boat on me and uh, whew, I'm out of breath going after him. He hit that plastic minnow there. Yeah, nice bass will get her back in the water. That's why, that's what got me out of it. I told you, I, most time walleyes won't wrap you around like that, but uh, hey folks, what a fun day we've had out here walleye fishing this in the middle of September. Vern Benson, thanks buddy. It's always a pleasure to have you, you on bet. the show with me, Vern. Thanks and for having me again. We'll, uh, we'll do it again next fall. I hope so. You betcha. And folks, please remember to practice selective harvesting. By doing so, we'll continue to have great fishing for years to come. I'm Dick Beardsley, along with my camerawoman, Raina Benson. We'll see you out here on the water.